Good day students, welcome to math.serp.com. In this tip, we're going to be going over part five, problems 21 to 25 of the ACT practice release questions for 2016. You can gain access to a copy of this document on www.actstudent.org. Let's take a look at problem 21. It reads, to get a driver's license, an applicant must pass a written test and a driving test. Past records show that 80% of applicants pass the written test, and 60% of those who have passed the written test pass the driving test. Based on these figures, how many applicants in a random group of 1,000 applicants will you expect to get driver's licenses? So one tip you want to keep in mind when working with percent of percent problems um, is that whenever you're calculating a percent of a percent of a number, you just simply multiply the percentages with one another and then multiply that by the number. Okay, so let me illustrate that process for you with this problem. So let's start with the first test. So 80% of applicants pass the written test. Okay, so number of um, written passers. I'm just going to call them that. Number of people that pass the written test, I'm going to call, call them number of written passers. Okay, so that's going to be 80%, 80 percent of the applicants. All right, 80 percent of applicants. Now, um, how many people pass the driving test? Okay, number of driving passers. We're told in the problem that the number of people that pass the driving test are 60% of those who pass the written test. So it's basically 60% of the number of written passers okay but what do we know about the number of people that passed the written test or written passers they 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 are 80 percent of the applicants so we can carry out the substitution of the first equation into the second one so number of driving passers is equal to 60 percent of number of written passes can be written as 80 percent of the applicants okay now how can we write this in mathematical form so 60 percent in decimal form is 0 0.6 remember you just move the decimal point two places to the left off means you multiply so we have 0 0.6 times 80 percent is 0 0.8 you move your decimal point to the left twice times total number of applicants in this case we have a thousand okay so what we're doing here is basically multiplying both percentages with the uh, actual number if you input that into your calculator you end up with 480 applicants answer is option letter b All right, let's take a look at problem 22. It reads, if A, B, and C are positive integers such that A to the B is equal to X and C to the B is equal to Y, then X, Y is equal to what? So before we do this, let's go over a property of exponents real quick. Property of exponent. Um... So what happens when you multiply two exponents with identical powers and different bases? So let's say you have a to the x times 8, no, actually, a to the x times b to the x, okay? So exponents have this, the same power but different bases. This can be written as a b raised to the x. This is known as the product of powers exponential property, okay? Product of powers property. We're going to apply this to this problem. 
Okay, how do we know that? Well, let me show you why we know that this is the property that we'll be applying. We have a to the b is equal to x, okay, and um, c to the b is equal to y. We're asked to find x times y, okay, the product of x and y. We know that x is a to the b times y, which is c to the b. What do you notice about these two factors here? They have identical powers but different bases. So that's why you use the uh, product of, of powers property of exponents. Okay, so what's the answer going to be? You just multiply the bases, group them in parentheses, raised to the common power that they both have. Answer is option letter H. All right, let's take a look at 23. It says, which of the following expressions is equivalent to this product right here? So we have 1 half y squared times 6x plus 2y plus 12x minus 12, 2y. All right, so what we want to do first is see if we can simplify the um quantity inside the parentheses, okay? Can I combine like terms? Let's see what we can do here. Bring down the 1 half y square, and then 6x and 12x are, are like terms, so we can combine them into 18x, all right? Combining 6x and 12x. We can also combine 2y, positive 2y and negative 2y, they're like terms, they add up to zero. Okay, so that's done. We can now write this over 1 and multiply, so we're going to have uh, 1 half y squared times 18x. Can I reduce this further? We certainly can. Put this over 1. Does 2 go into 18? That certainly does. 2 goes into itself once. 2 goes into 18 9 times. Your final result is going to be 9xy square. Option letter A is your final result. Number 24. It reads, an artist makes a profit of 500p minus p square dollars from selling p paintings. What is the fewest number of paintings that the artist can sell to make a profit of at least um, 60 thousand dollars okay so um remember if you're thinking about the quantity at least it means that it's either that quantity or more so at least basically implies greater than or equal we're going to be solving for equal because we want to target 60 um sixty thousand dollars in this situation all right so to make exactly the lowest possible acceptable profits to make exactly uh, 60,000 um, in profit, we are simply going to set the profit quantity right here, uh, 500p minus p squared. This profit ex expression, we're going to set it equal to the desired profit, 60,000. This is the lowest possible profit that um, the artist wants to make. All right? It could be greater, that's fine, but we want to find the least amount. Now, we can solve this problem by setting this equation to zero and solving it as a quadratic equation because this is a quadratic equation. We can factor by uh, grouping and then proceed from there. But the fastest way to do this problem is to simply test these options to see which satisfies this equation right here. Okay, remember we have limited time on the test, so whenever you have the opportunity to plug and chug, just test answers to see which works, you want to take advantage of that. Okay, so we're going to test uh, the options Um, to see which p, to see which p value yields our target of 60,000, okay? 
So which p uh, p value yields sixty thousand? That's the question. Okay, so let's start with option letter F. Option F, we have um, p equals one hundred. If I plug that into this expression right here, the profit expression, do I get sixty thousand? That is the question. So let's do it. We're gonna do five hundred instead of p. We put one hundred minus 100 square and you can just simply put this in your calculator you end up with 40,000 is that what we want 40,000 is not equal to 60,000 so this option F is a fail that's not what we want okay and then we go to the next one option G P is equal to 150 so we have 500 times 150 minus 150 square let's not forget the parentheses if we plug this into our calculator we'll end up with 52,500 and that is not equal to 60,000 either so this is also a fail proceed to the next one we're going to keep uh, trying out options until we get an output of 60,000 option H what if P equals 200? Plug 200 into your profit expression. When you plug it into your calculator, you get an output of 60,000. This is exactly what we want. Okay, so our answer is option letter H. Let's take a look at 25, the last problem in this review installment. It reads, last month, Lucy had two expenditures of $900. The pie chart below breaks down these expenditures by category. The category in which Lucy's expenditures were greatest is what percent of her total expenditures to the nearest percent. So we're uh, basically generating a fraction. Remember, fraction is part of a whole where we're comparing the greatest expenditure to um, the total expenditure. All right. One thing you want to recollect when it comes to converting fractions to decimals is that to convert from um, decimals to percent, you want to move the decimal point to the right two places. OK, so we're going to be doing that in this problem. All right. So the fraction that we're going to be creating, remember, a fraction is basically part of a whole part over the whole thing now for greatest expenditure over the total we're going to be having the greatest basically the biggest dollar value which is clothes okay so that's 254 divided by the whole the total expenditure for the entire circle which is 900 dollars all right so uh, to convert this into percent, there are two ways we can do this. We can multiply by um, 100 and simplify, or we can convert this to decimal first and then um, go from decimal to percent. Okay, that's the method I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be converting this into decimal first and then from that into percent. All right, so let's see. Um, so what are we going to do first here? Just do 254 divided by 900. Answer is um, 0.28 uh, two repeating. Okay, so that's 0.28, and then the two just keeps repeating forever. Now, how can we convert that into percent? 0.282 to repeating can be converted into percent by simply moving the decimal points to the right two places. One, two, bam. So this becomes 28.2 repeating percent. If we want to round this to the nearest percent, this number is less than five, so we round down truncate this component off, we're left with 28% as a percentage that represents 
the fraction of the greatest expenditure to the total? Answer is option letter B. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful to you, do give us a thumbs up. We'll appreciate the positive feedback. Do not forget to subscribe for updates to the rest of this review installment. If you have any questions about this video or any math concepts on the ACT exam in general, just ask your question in the comment section below and we'll be glad to assist you. More clips can be found on mathcoffserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.